Hello and welcome to Money Markets and More. Sorry for the long time away from this channel. I've been so busy with other stuff. I've let this channel die, but I'm going to try and revive it. Um, before I start, a quick heads up. I'm doing two shows in London. One next Wednesday, the 27th, me and the band. But I think there's only about two tickets for, left for that. That's at Crazy Cox in Piccadilly Circus. And second, I'm doing my Edinburgh show, the lecture with funny bits about gold. I'm doing that at the Museum of Comedy uh, in the West End for one light only. October the 19th is the date, and I will put ticket links to both in the description. Although, as I say, I think the first one will have sold out. Now, today we are talking cockroaches, portfolio construction. Um, I narrated a documentary once about cockroaches. And uh, back in the day when I used to get voiceovers... <laughs> I still get a few. But anyway, um, never mind the repulsion we may feel towards them. They really are the most amazing creatures. And in fact, that repulsion might actually work in their favour because nobody wants anything to do with them, uh, thereby bettering their chances of survival. But cockroaches have been around since before the dinosaurs. According to Wikipedia, they're 320 million years old, having originated during the Carboniferous period, whenever that was. They're hardy as hell. They can survive in tropical heat, freezing subarctic temperatures, minus below minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius. They can survive in the desert with no access to water, but they can also survive in and under water. They, they can even make it through nuclear fallout. Many cockroaches survived the nuclear bombs dropped on Hiroshima in 1945. I think you can even cut off, well I know you can cut off a cockroach's head, not that I've tried it, and it will live on at least for a bit, maybe a week. Now wouldn't it be great to have a portfolio as hardy as that? Something that can survive all economic weather. And um, in the global financial crisis back in 2009, I remember seeing a presentation by Mark Farber, in which he described a, a portfolio for all economic weathers. And it was broke down roughly as follows. 25% gold uh, with a little bit of cash, 25% equities, 25% bonds, 25% real estate. And Dylan Grice, who at the time was an analyst with SockGen, he advocated something similar. And he called it the cockroach portfolio after that most hardy of creatures. Now, the idea of a permanent cockroach portfolio for all weathers was probably first popularised by an American investment advisor called Harry Brown, who died in 2006. Quite an amazing guy. He was an author, a politician. His books um, mostly centred around investment, sold million, more than two million copies. And in 1996 and 2000, he was the Libertarian Party's presidential nominee, something I'm going to be one day. But as an investment advisor in 1982, he developed what is known as this permanent portfolio investment strategy and he then wrote about it in 1999 in a book called fail safe investing lifelong financial security in 30 minutes and this portfolio would assure his words you are financially safe no matter what the future brings and his idea was that there are four macroeconomic environments four seasons if you like inflation deflation growth and recession and one of those four will always apply. And so he allocated his portfolio in such a way that some of it would perform well in each of those seasons. 25% in US stocks, that would do well in times of growth. 25% in long-term US Treasury bonds, they'd also do well during times of growth, but also in deflation. 25% cash, that's for recession. And 25% in gold would see you through the inflation. And all in all, in Brown's portfolio for all economic seasons, it looks something like that. And you'd rebalance uh, once a year to maintain the alloc uh, allocation. Now, Brown's differs from Grice's and Fibers because it contained no allocation to real estate. But there you go, a, a portfolio allocation that might even make it through a financial nuclear fallout like a cockroach. Now, I've got two criticisms. Firstly, if you go back to 1982, when Brown first conceived that portfolio, the S&P 500 has outperformed it by some margin. And so, yes, the port cockroach portfolio is much less volatile, but what's the point if you can just get an S&P tracker? And you could argue that this has been an extraordinary period for US equities, maybe, but even so. And in fact, if you want total cockroach, just go gold and gold alone. Gold being indestructible is even more hardy than cockroaches. It's been around longer and it lasts longer. 
when you, me, humanity and the cockroach itself are all gone, the gold will still be there shining away. Uh, I guess the reason not to own just gold is that you want uh, diversification. Now, diversification, if you look at some of the richest people you know, and I bet you close to none of them made their fortune having a diversified portfolio. They may have made their money from their profession by building a successful business in property, in Bitcoin, trading, out of an inheritance, divorce. A lot of people make a lot of money out of that. Whatever. Perhaps they wrote a book or a play or a film or something that turned out to be a smash hit or they're a celebrity or a sports star, whatever. Most of the time, they were anything but diversified. In fact, they were concentrated. But if the majority of the super rich or even just the rich made their money being concentrated, they kept it by being diversified. The purpose of a diversified portfolio is not so much to make your fortune, but to keep and grow what you already have. And even Warren Buffett, who's kind of big example of that counters my argument, he had a few big wins early on and then he just grew his fortune by building a successful investment business and then levering what Einstein called the eighth wonder of the world, compounding in his favour. Um, I was chatting, by the way, with a mining investor I know the other day, and he made $40 million in 2005, 2006. But he was moaning about the fact that he'd stayed concentrated. And so he handed a vast lump of that back. Had he diversified and then just grew his wealth at, say, 10% a year? I mean, oh, it's already very good, but if he'd grown it at 10% a year, he'd be sitting on a 200 million pound pot. So, but even at 5% a year, he'd be worth close to 80 or 90 million. So, um, concentration is how you make your fortune. Diversification is how you keep and grow it. Unfortunately, concentration is also how, can you lose a, how you can lose a fortune. If you went all in on Bitcoin in 2013 or tech or whatever, you'd be minted. But if you went all on in, in mining, you'd be brassic. So, I think you get the point. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be back with more vids very soon. Please come to one of those two gigs, those two events in London. Tickets in the thingy jog below. And there's, I've got quite a few interviews coming up uh, as well. So look out for those.